All right, I had to look this one up. I, I don't know how I feel about the name change. We go through it every year, but we are talking about the 68 Ventures Bowl, formerly the Lending Tree Bowl. We have South Alabama, a 16-and-a-half-point favorite against Eastern Michigan. This game carries just an over-under of 46-and-a-half points. You don't often see a spread this high paired with a total this low. Uh, it kind of tells you what odds makers expect out of this one. This kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN from Hancock Whitney Stadium, which is... A home game for South Alabama. That's where they play their home football games. Eastern Michigan, their starting quarterback, Austin Smith, hit the transfer portal along with a starting guard and one of their top pass rushers. The backup quarterback, I looked at him a little bit. He has a pretty nice arm, but you know all of his film is from a different level. It's not FBS. So when you look at his numbers from the FBS, uh, they're not great. He hasn't been able to complete passes at like a 50% clip so far. So we'll see. But as we've seen all bowl season, who knows? This kid will come out and light it up and, and we'll all look silly for doubting an Eastern Michigan will cruise to a 20-point win or whatever happens during bowl season like this. But Kelly, I'm going to be honest. Even at this number, I wouldn't bet Eastern Michigan if it was somebody else's money. This team is just not very good. I think we'll get into it with your numbers here soon. But their best win on their slate, Buffalo, who ranks uh, 114th. In my aggregate of power ratings, that seriously, that is the highest ranked win that they have. Southern Alabama, decided edge and strength of schedule, strength of record. Um, and as far as six-win group of five teams goes, I don't think there's a team better than South Alabama. Um, they're the highest rated in the power ratings by far. Like, it's not even close. And they're only behind seven teams nationally in the power five that have six or fewer wins. South Alabama, their defense is very strong. Uh, until they're not. They shut out Marshall. They held Arkansas State's 14 points. They mostly held Troy in check. Uh, but then they gave up 55 to Texas State, 33 to Louisiana. So, again, a mixed bag of defensive efforts. The 68 Ventures Bull, Brett. Reminds me, like, what, you're making like your Twitter, tw Twitter handle and what, the 1 through 67 Ventures were already taken, so you're at 68 <laughs> Ventures Bull? I'm kidding. I know it's a it's a company. Um, But, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the name. We'll say that right away. We go from the famous Idaho Potato Bowl to this one. That's a steep drop. And also, Brett, you talk about it, steep drop in terms of quality here, at least with regard to Eastern Michigan. At number 122, EMU is by far the worst power-rated team to be playing in a bowl game. The Eagles, you touched on this, Brett, they did not beat a team power-rated better than, I'm going to give them number 112. Uh, you said Buffalo was 114. For me, for me, for me, they're 112. That was their best win all season. And their power rating, the Eagles, that is, fell nearly a full touchdown over the course of the year, which ranks in the bottom 10 of all of FBS. This was the worst team in Ypsilanti by my number since 2015. Five bowl game previews in a row here, Brett, featuring a team from the Sun Belt. Like you said, I guess that'll happen when you have 12 of your 14 teams <laughs> going bowling. While South Alabama finished the year 6-6, six and six, which is a game and a half worse than my preseason realistic expectations, half of the Jaguars' losses were by a single possession. And at number 56 in the power ratings, this is actually the best South Alabama team in my data set, which for them dates back to 2012 when the Jags made the jump to FBS. At face value, these are two 6-6 six and six teams from G5 conferences. But digging just a little bit deeper, Brett, and you went much deeper, this should be one of the most lopsided games of bowl season, at least on paper. Again, Take my numbers and any power rating with a grain of salt during this time, but I understand here why the line is what it is. South Alabama, I really don't care who's playing or who's not playing, more, more importantly. They should win this game. Will they cover? That's for everyone to figure out. I would be shocked if they lost this game outright. So when you're in bowl pick em competitions with like confidence points, this one, which is just a straight-up winner, this one, very, very high on the list for me uh, for South Alabama. Yeah, this is, my, this is my top one. I put 43 confidence points on it just because it is what it is. When you look at – you talked about half of their losses being one score. This is going to be interesting to project in the next season when you look at mm -hmm. one score wins and losses. These are their wins against FBS teams. 33-7 over Oklahoma State. 55-7 over ULM. 55-3 over Southern Miss. You have a 21-14 with uh, Arkansas State, but then they shut out Marshall 28-0. When this team wins, they destroy you. That's what they've done all year. When they lose, it's usually pretty close. Sands are opener with uh, Tulane, and then uh, just that Louisiana game was real weird. Um, but yeah, th this is a team that if they're going to win, they're they going to absolutely crush, and that's why I think the number is where it's at. We did talk about 68 Ventures. I do have to bring up, it is kind of a local-ish. Uh, Daphne, Alabama is where it's based out of, and it is a real estate company, according hey. to Google. 
you know what? Local small business, great. Get your name out there for a bowl. We're sitting here talking about it, right? So it's clearly working. I just had to poke some fun at it when you're coming after the uh, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl there. But, Brett, <laughs> back to the one, one possession games, one score games. There's a reason that I'm leaving that graphic up on the website, on the What If tab, even above the What If rankings, because I know people like to have fun with the What If, and so do I. It's not real, but it's just a talking point. It, it, there is some things you can glean from it, but most importantly, your net one possession wins. What, what's your score in one possession games? Are you plus? Are you minus? Did you win more of those? Did you lose more of those? A team like Washington, they finished the regular season plus six. They won six more one possession and overtime games than they lost. Throw in the Pac-12 championship game. Now I believe they're plus seven. Then you got a team like, you know, actually there's a bunch that are tied at the bottom. Arkansas, East Carolina, Nebraska, TCU, all those teams score a minus four, meaning they lost four more games than they won classified by that one possession. That is informative. South Alabama oh, yeah. here, they're minus two in this category. I said they they lost three games. That means they would have won one by, by a one possession. So they're minus two overall. I leave that up there because as you're looking to make that transition in next year, and it probably loses some uh, predictive uh, power at this point, Brett, because of the transfer portal and just how much rosters turn over year over year. But this is a stat that historically, or, or a, a category that historically has proven to be uh, predictive in nature in terms of, hey, if you won a lot of one possession games, you can probably expect the win-loss record to regress ne- next year. If you lost a bunch of those games, you can probably expect the win-loss record to progress next year. So there's a reason I leave that up there. I know we're, we're off, off topic here, but I do think it's really important. But no, let's let's stay off topic because we, you know, this does matter. Like we we will talk about this all off season long. You think about the old math uh, trick. You flip a coin a thousand times, and the clo- the more you flip, the closer to fifty percent it goes. That's how chance works. And when you're dealing with one score games, chances are the post game win expectancy is somewhere around fifty percent. And you flip enough coins, it should you know regress to the mean. Now, there's two ways to look at that. Number one, were you lucky? Uh, like I'm, I'm going to alienate some people here, but last year's TCU team, incredibly luck, lucky, fortunate, out of their minds, turnovers, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Or are you really, really well coached? Now we have this, the hindsight to say it was a lot of luck for TCU because you know they were not very well coached this year. But when you're talking about a team like Washington, I think they are very well coached. Mm-hmm. That's not a team that is up to luck. I, I know they've had a, you know a degree of luck this year, but that's a lot of. Uh, coaching prowess and stuff like that. So it is important to identify those. And of course, when talking about teams that are a bit unlucky, I I think uh, South Alabama falls into the category of well-coached. They are better than their six and six record may entail.